today I want to answer the question, what is salvation? Life is a matter of choices. Every day we make hundreds of choices. We choose what to wear, what to eat, where to go. Hundreds of choices every day. But sadly, the most important decision we can ever make, most people simply ignore. Our time on this earth is a very short time compared to eternity. Eternity is forever. Eternity is never ending. Again, our time on this earth is but a microsecond compared to eternity. The most important decision we can ever make is choosing where we're going to spend eternity. And make no mistake about it, it is a choice. It's a choice that every one of us can make. Eternity is a very long time. As stated, it is never ending. When you leave this earth, you will spend eternity somewhere. According to the Bible, there are only two places where a person will spend eternity. It will either be heaven or hell. That is your choice. You will choose heaven or you will choose hell. And contrary to what most people believe, you can have full knowledge of where you'll spend eternity. You can know for a certainty that you'll spend eternity in heaven beyond any shadow of a doubt. You don't have to hope. You don't have to wonder. You don't have to guess. You can know for sure that you'll spend eternity in heaven with God. Now, here's the problem. People have been so indoctrinated with the theory of evolution that they no longer believe in God. If you don't believe in God, I have one question for you. Where did the heavens and the earth come from? How did something spring from nothing? And for those of you who say believers in God are trusting in fairy tales, what could be more of a fairy tale <laughs> as well as an impossibility for something to come from nothing? How could this vast universe come about from nothing? It had to start somewhere and at a specific time. There had to be a cause for the effect. What was the cause? What caused something to come out of nothing? There is no reasonable explanation. There is nothing known to man that could explain how the universe came about other than a supernatural explanation. How did complexity come out of chaos? How could something as intricate as the human body come about without any plan or design? How could the universe make choices? I hear people say things like, the universe chose. Well, if the universe can think, if the universe can make choices, then what you are actually describing is God, the creator of all things. Now this God who created the heavens and the earth has communicated with us. He has given us the Bible, the word of God, that tells us who he is. It tells us what he requires of us. It tells us that 2,000 years ago, God became flesh in the person of Jesus Christ, it tells us that God's entire purpose in doing so was to die for our sins. You see, man is not inherently good. Man is sinful. Man is the opposite of a righteous God. Man is estranged from God because of sin. But God came to earth as Jesus and atoned for our sins to create a pathway back to himself. God has provided a way of salvation. Now here are some things we need to understand in order to have a relationship with the living God. The first thing we must understand is sin has separated us from God. Isaiah 59 verse 2 says, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. 
Romans 3 verse 10 says, There is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.23 tells us, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The thing you must understand is that God requires perfection in order to stand in his presence. God hates sin and cannot allow sin in his presence. In order to be in the presence of God, we must be perfect. However, man cannot be perfect. Man is sinful. Man is depraved. And being in that state, we are separated from God. The only way that we would be able to stand in the presence of God is for someone to be perfect for us. Someone whose attributes could be imputed to us in order for God to view us as perfect. And that was the whole purpose of God sending Jesus to the earth, to die on the cross, to shed his blood, and be punished in our place. That is why nothing you or I could do could ever merit salvation. Isaiah 64 verse 6 states, But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. The best that we as sinful human beings can do, God views as filthy rags. There is nothing that you and I can do in order to impress God. Salvation is not a matter of works, good deeds, living a good life or anything else that we as sinful humans believe deserves some type of merit or approval. In John 14, verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. We live in an age today where everything is relative. Everyone believes in their own truth. Our truth is what we believe in our minds. Relativism is the new norm. But the simple fact is, truth is still truth, whether we want to believe it or not. God's truth never changes. As the Bible says, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. There is only one way to God, and God has told us exactly what that is. There is only one true God, and that one true God is revealed to us who he is through his word. And he has told us the path to become reconciled with him. Jesus said in Matthew seven thirteen, Enter ye at the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go that way. Now, why is the gate described as narrow? Because, unfortunately, most people try to get to heaven their own way. They're too stubborn and prideful to simply believe that salvation is a free gift. Their pride will not allow themselves to believe that they don't have to earn it. They seriously think they can live a good enough life and do enough good things, good according to man's standards, that they can somehow earn heaven. But the truth is, it's the exact opposite. If you try to earn your way there or think that somehow the life you've lived can merit heaven, you're sadly mistaken. It is not something that can be earned. The whole purpose of Jesus coming to earth and dying for our sins is because we cannot earn it. It's because we can do nothing to merit it. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The death spoken of here is eternal death, eternal separation from God. That's all our supposed good life or good works can earn us, eternal death. That means spending eternity in hell separated from God. Again, think of that word, eternity eternity. Eternity is forever, people. Eternity never ends. Imagine spending eternity in never-ending torment. Imagine the hopelessness that you'd experience knowing that will never end. 
Imagine dying and waking up in hell with your first thought being, this is forever. There will be those who ignore God's message, still believing that we evolved from a rock or who knows what. There will be those who still believe they can somehow earn heaven. But unfortunately, they will be the ones who wake up in hell and their first thoughts will be, this is forever, never ending, all eternity. Are you willing to take that chance? What if you ignore this message, you die and wake up in hell? You'll be wishing you'd listen to me and listen to God's message directly from his word. You'll be wishing you hadn't been so stubborn, wanting to do your own thing and do things your own way. However, at that point, it will be too late. Romans 5 verses 15 to 16 calls salvation the free gift. Ephesians 2 8 calls salvation the gift of God. Well, the next verse says, it is not of works, so nobody can boast. It is a gift. God has freely provided the way back to him. God has freely given us heaven, but he will not force it on anybody. God leaves it up to us. God says, it's your choice. You have a choice to make. Right now, as you listen to this, God is speaking to your heart. And you have the choice of accepting the gift or rejecting it. Right now, God is giving you the opportunity to respond. It's as simple as saying, yes, Lord, I accept your free gift. I realize that Jesus was already punished in my place. I am deciding to trust in him and his dying on the cross is my hope for salvation. It's free, people. All you have to do is reach out by faith and accept it. Now, you may think there's nothing to it. You may think God is just a fabrication. But here's the thing, people. The choice you make has eternal consequences one way or the other. It's your choice where you spend eternity. You may not believe in heaven or hell, but let me ask you one question. What if you're wrong? 